Hello and welcome to the show. We start this week's downhill chaos with a new car to GTA 5, the Roosevelt Valor. I'm not sure how much different this is to the normal Roosevelt, but seeing as neither has been down in on PC anyway in this series, thought I would give it a go. The hikers were being a pain, so I slightly may I may have knocked one of their hats off, and they might have fallen over a little bit as uh, <laughs> as I went past. This car wasn't quite sure what to be expecting from this vehicle particularly. It immediately didn't feel particularly comfortable down this early part of the course and sure enough I saw an opportunity where I thought I could get a bit more speed out of the vehicle and I couldn't and we go tumbling off down the mountain. Brakes did a pretty good job of slowing the car down though once it started going downhill. That's not bad to get stopped. It is a seriously steep hill. To have, to have come to a rest here, we've seen many a car end up down there in uh, in that ditch before. So yeah, to get stopped there is is not bad going at all for the vehicle, unfortunately. Uh, it was a little bit... Uh, <laughs> The next run, I was uh, yeah, I was still expecting the brakes to be worse. I, I, I kept thinking that uh, yeah, that the car was going to get stopped worse than it actually did. So I was a little early on the brakes. Similar problem trying to uh, get myself lined up for that jump again, though. Even on this really very very steep hill, the car can can get slowed down and uh, will will get stopped. So. Yeah, that's, that's some really rather good going from such an, an old vehicle. As I said, it really did not like this top part of the course. Bouncing around this time, in the end, it was the curse of the hikers as the car wibbled and wobbled from side to side until eventually hitting the hikers. And that was what spun the vehicle round later on, trying to carry speed across the jump, and it was a fraction too much speed across the jump. Rear end ever so slightly lifted up on the landing, uh, but uh, the way the car was positioned just ran too wide, and that was going to see the vehicle happen have a really, really rather large accident. And then we're back to having problems at the start. And I'll try and twist the car to the right there because I don't want to end up in the bushes. You hit the bushes and it pretty much stops the, or stops a lot of the cars dead. So I do tend to kind of twist a little bit to the right on the landing, unfortunately that time a little bit too much to the right. And that would see the car off of the course. Again, a little out, uh, out-breaking maneuver as I was uh, trying to trying to push the car more and more. Just ran that, uh, that rear wheel across some rocks and that would put me in some trouble as well. Uh, on this particular attempt, Coyote managed to get caught underneath the wheels of the car. Uh, this time it's just the curse of the wildlife as I, it just wouldn't turn. And then there were rock faces to bounce across and promptly roll the vehicle over. Took a little while to uh, to get a clean run with this car. It wasn't too bad though. It's really this first section. I don't quite know why so much down this first section. It just did not like. It did not like going down there at all. So yeah, had to be a little bit on on the cautious side. There wasn't really any fear of rolling this aside from kind of being bounced from side to side down that first bit. There was never really a fear of of rolling this car particularly. And as I said, the brakes were pretty good actually at uh, getting this vehicle stopped. A couple of times I had uh, a little bit. It was a little bit more awkward getting it around the hairpin. You had to uh, yeah really sort of chuck the car in to uh, to get it turned around there. But on this run there were absolutely no problems. And even like some of these bumps down here, these are quite nasty bumps around this corner. Many a car has been thrown sideways and so on. And that was that wasn't troubling the Roosevelt. So I don't quite know what it was about the very opening section that caused the car so much issues again across this first large jump absolutely fine little bit on two wheels around the next turn but uh, everything was still all very very much under control and then using a bit of the acceleration it's not too shabby a car for acceleration and straight line speed no it's not quite going to compete with the supercars but it doesn't too bad for uh, the for the acceleration front and then it's up towards the very bumpy second to last corner again a bit of a two wheel moment but uh, nothing I couldn't manage with and the final turn flat out no problem for the Valor it is across the line bounce off the hillside and promptly managed to smack the roof onto a tree but it made it it made it down yeah the opening section was a real a real problem with this vehicle, but once once dealt with that, the rest of the course really wasn't too bad. I think it's quite it's quite a nice car. It's uh, I think it's a great looking vehicle, and there's some interesting mods as well you can do to it, as you can see with the <laughs> with the engine bits that I got going on uh, with it. Yeah, it fared relatively well. Up next, we have a Dacia. Yes, we're going to be putting the, the Dacia Duster down down Mount Chiliad. The last time I used one of these in a game was in uh, Street Legal Racing. I had a silly powerful one in, uh, in there. But uh, yeah, I figured it'd be fun to give a go 
with uh, with this vehicle. Unfortunately, we can't get it to spit fire. Uh, again, the hikers were in a wrong point, and one of them spiraled off to the left. It was quite an impressive spiral he had going on. Having gone from the Valor that actually got stopped pretty well to this, uh, that didn't really get stopped very well at all. That was the main the main issue, really, with the Duster. Again, you know, we're not talking about a supercar here. The acceleration and power and so on isn't as great as quite a few vehicles that have gone down here. It's not too bad, though, on the acceleration front and so on, but the brakes are not particularly good. And that leads to some spectacular tumbles. Uh, not too often I uh, send cars off there. I've, I've normally got the hang of that part of the course, but I braked where I thought would be sensible, and the duster just doesn't quite get slowed down, so you go soaring off the course. Again, carrying too much speed, running wide and all over the place, just about got it under control, up until, well, yeah, that point. I actually got a bit of oversteer. I, I managed to fight and bounce off some rocks, and it was all almost back under control, but uh, a bit of oversteer at the wrong moment, and I just didn't have the grip to uh, to do anything with it again me trying to avoid the bushes caused myself some uh, some troubles to be fair this car you didn't actually have to worry about the bushes as much this really didn't have too much of an issue unlike you know like the supercar that pretty much stopped it dead and, and would turn it 90 degrees uh, this could go through them without too many problems i discovered after a few attempts so yeah that one there I, you don't need to quite go as aggressive trying to avoid them more out breaking maneuvers with the dacia normally the cars manage to get stuck on the rocks and they don't normally kind of flip and roll their way over so well done to the duster for that one coming to a rest of the imagine the door off uh, when reversing it uh, back out across the first First of the big jumps actually lands it relatively well, but again, we're just carrying that speed and get some interesting oversteer. I wasn't expecting to have oversteer problems with this car, and not very many vehicles find themselves stuck out on this part of the course. Certainly not as controlled <laughs> as, as I was that time around. But yeah, a little too much under, uh, oversteer, sorry. Uh, then we carried a bit too much speed into the next turn with the, uh, yeah, missing the braking points ever so slightly. Didn't help being in the air. Uh, coming into the braking zone there, so that's gonna that's gonna cause issues for the uh, for the duster. This bit here is always a bit of a challenge for cars, especially the cars that struggle with the brakes a little bit. I was trying to carry more corner speed, and it didn't it didn't work. It, it didn't work for the. <laughs> for the duster. Again though, having managed to kind of slide my way off the course, I did get the duster back under control again. Yeah, not a good idea to run quite so wide through there. Almost managed to save it. I didn't clip any of the rocks, but in dipping the wheels over the edge there, spun the car around. And this time we do manage to clip the rocks on the outside. I thought I'd rescued it and then in trying to sort of spin it around and get it going again, I uh, promptly got it stuck next to the uh, to the rock down there. So yeah, it took a bit to uh, to get the hang of this car. Any of the big braking zones, you uh, had to be you had to be a bit careful with it cuz it just simply didn't have the stopping power of quite a lot of vehicles that have have gone down here. And as I said at the start, you know, it doesn't have the acceleration. It's still not bad though. We're getting up to 68 miles an hour down there, which is not too shabby for Mount Chile. The Formula 1 cars were only doing 90 down, <laughs> down that part of the course. So, you know, it's not too bad for the day. See, I got incredibly lucky around that next corner. I had one wheel dangling over the edge. Could have gone horribly wrong, but uh, got away with it. Again, you can throw the duster around these corners. It's actually quite a nice car to drive. In all honesty, it was quite a fun vehicle to drive down here. The suspension did very, very well, dealing with all of the all of the bumps. You just had to watch occasionally when you chucked it into a corner with a little too much speed, you could get oversteer, and it was the you kind of get to a point where you just couldn't kind of keep it under control anymore. The back end was going to go round on you and you couldn't quite stop it so that was a little bit on the scary side I get a very lucky bounce uh, sliding my way through those quarters not really intentionally but that's just how the duster uh, decided it want to do that uh, that section again landing very very smoothly across these large jumps when you take the jump straight the landing is quite nice and smooth through the bushes it got a tiny little bit of a twist on the on the car's angle but it wasn't too bad and again around here you can run wide you can run across the bumps a little bit of oversteer almost causes some issues Issues for the duster managed to gather it all back up and it's the same <laughs> it's into the same same kind of hillside that I went with the valor trying to uh, try to jump clear of the trees I haven't quite got to the game got got the knack of it anymore um, yeah I like the duster though it, it wasn't the fastest or the best brakes but it was a, a decent enough vehicle certainly to uh, to be driving down down Chile and survived in rather good condition. That final vehicle is an interesting one. This is called the Death Wing. It is a modified quad bike. It's a rather interesting 
looking contraption. This one, I think it's really rather cool. And you can get it in black and orange, so you know, what more could I possibly want from a, <laughs> from a vehicle? Yeah, we've got kind of like the, the, the back of it is essentially a normal quad. The front we've got sort of much wider. It's an interesting, an interesting thing. Um, however, being based on a quad bike, I expected this one to go really rather fast. Down here, quads, much like the motorbikes, have stupid Endless amounts of grip, fantastic acceleration, good brakes and so on, which tends to mean they're very fast. Down at Chiliad. You did see there, when I hit the Cougar, it just instantly tipped the vehicle sideways and I'll get myself into a similar problem later down this uh, first run. Hit the wildlife and pretty much lose control of the vehicle. That is the downside with something like this. You can't really get away with uh, with hitting anything. I was uh, again trying to avoid, I was trying to sort of smooth out that section with the jump, but I was just a little too far to the right. I do cover it back onto the road with some interesting twists. It's incredibly twitchy, I found this one, especially when it was sort of starting going sideways. It could all of a sudden twitch back to uh, going in the, in the way that you want it to, which is great, but equally it could twitch out of line and cause, and cause you some problems if you get it a little bit wrong. Again, brakes, very, very good on a vehicle like this, but more wildlife getting stuck under the front wheels doesn't help matters, just couldn't turn the vehicle in to the corner, gets slowed down incredibly well. I was surprised it can't actually climb back up the hills as well. There's just not the, there's not quite the power that you get from the supercars when it comes to trying to uh, climb up. Yes, it is incredibly light, but there's you know, a much smaller engine on the thing, so it doesn't quite have the power to uh, climb back up the hills in the same way that some of the ridiculously fast supercars have. And while yes, the brakes and uh, sort of the cornering abilities are very, very good, you can still push it and get yourself into trouble. Again, bouncing across the rocks, not such a good idea. Could carry phenomenal speed across that jump. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean you carry phenomenal speed down here, and I was fighting and fighting, and yeah, I couldn't couldn't get it under control. We managed to flick it off a rock. I was trying to correct it all, and then we do many, many spectacular stunts. Almost land it, really close to uh, landing it, unfortunately. It was a bit of a heavy hit, and Michael pinged off. Yeah, it, it didn't end. It didn't end too well for Michael on that one. Again, I was having issues down this first section. This is more, and this is often thing that happens with the uh, motorbikes as well. Because you can carry so much speed down the opening bit, of course, you want to go really rather fast. However, it's so narrow, and these things have got so much grip and can be so twitchy, that uh, trying to get it right can be a bit of a pain. Because it only takes a tiny movement at the speeds that these will go, and the speeds at which they'll change direction. The smallest, uh, the smallest of movements just out of line will send it firing off the course. So, yeah, I had to be careful down here, and that's why you'll see on this run, I was just a little slower coming across that jump, make sure I could line it all up, and straight line speed, this was only, I mean, that's only, what, a mile an hour quicker than we got from the from the duster, so top speed wise there isn't a huge amount of, you know, in this, as you would expect from a quad bike esque vehicle, however, where it makes up its time is it can carry fantastic quarter speed and it's got great acceleration to get up to that top speed around here and the brakes mean you can get very very late on the brakes into these turns i was amazed i got away with bouncing off the coyote there normally i was, I was expecting that to all go horribly horribly wrong I actually ran a tiny bit too deep into that corner to make sure the wildlife doesn't catch me out again it was ever so slightly i think lifting up the front wheels through a couple of these corners that's why you saw the back end uh, almost letting go but managed to get away with it 70 miles an hour across that jump and it's perfectly controlled on the landing is always always nice when you can manage that being careful of the bushes down here making sure to slow it around this uh, bumpy second to last quarter but there's enough grip to catch it if things go wrong flat out around the final turn even with the wheels lifting off the ground and the death wing is across the line and stops incredibly quickly uh, even with a slightly out of control across the line and kind of bouncing and spinning it's uh, yeah it can still get slowed down before bumping into something so yeah, a very, very impressive, impressive vehicle. You don't want to be getting the wildlife caught underneath the front wheels. That can cause no end of, uh, of problems with this one. And, you know, the brakes are good, the handling is great and so on. Still easy to uh, over overdrive the vehicle from time to time. But yeah, it's... Uh it's well suited for going down Chiliad, shall we say, and it is no surprise to see the Deathwing go into fourth place. A 116.7 is the fastest four-wheeled vehicle. Uh, down here it goes quicker than the Renault F1 car. That is a quick time. Not as quick as the motorbikes, mine, but uh, yeah, that is still a, a really rather fast time uh, from that. Not massively surprising, though. I've I have driven quad bikes down here before. I know how fast they can be. So that style of vehicle, yeah, not too surprising to see it go as quickly. The uh, the Roosevelt Valor goes into 53rd place. So we're talking very much mid-table from this car. A 129.1. 
Again, another fairly respectable time. I reckon faster than the Ferrari 458, faster than the BMW M1 Pro Car. It's just a tenth of a second down on the Guardian. That's a pretty good area of the table to have uh, to have found itself in. And a little bit further down, we find the Dacia Duster, 131.3, considering the braking issues with that car. Again, not particularly surprised to see it this far down. The interesting thing, the Dacia Duster goes a tenth of a second quicker than the Land Rover Defender, and it goes eight tenths of a second quicker than the Ford uh, F-150. Yeah, so <laughs> Land Rover would be too pleased with that one. Yeah, the Duster's a decent enough car, just the brakes are shocking on it. It just doesn't get slowed down for the corners. You've been so long on the brakes with uh, with that vehicle. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. I will put a link to all the mods that I've used in this video in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.